TV and thank you for joining the average golfer here at 4 Golf Chester about to test a brand new product from TaylorMade and this one I like the look of massively dying to know how this one performs it's the Gapper set of irons or hybrids whatever you want to call them I suppose depending on which one you're looking at if I throw some images up alongside me now you'll see there's three versions of this type of club you've got the high you've got the mid and you've got the low all very different head types and profiles all aimed at different people all got different lofts one of the things that's key with these clubs is the fact that they're all fully adjustable loft and lie and the idea is you're going to dial in an exact yardage number that you're looking to fill a void between your longest iron and into your shortest wood i don't know about you but that's something i've struggled with in the past it's always difficult just to get that difference and that's what the gapper clubs are aimed at starting off let's look at the low it's a very small and compact profile as you can see Aim certainly I would imagine at the better player but certainly somebody who likes to see that smaller profile sat behind the ball and I've got to admit for me a little bit worrying like I said on whether or not I can perform this one uh, time after time. Uh, the mid is very much that little bit chunkier, a little bit easier on the eye in terms of confidence inspiring when sat behind the ball and for me this one now is starting to tick some boxes. Looks good, bit of confidence inspiring and I think with the loft right on this one, it might be something that I'm really interested in. We then go into the classic, more hybrid classic design, and that's the high. Now this again, I think is gonna to appeal to a wide variety of people. I've got it in the four, it's available in the five and the six. And again, don't forget all those are fully adjustable as well. So they've got a lot of product here that could fill a, take a lot of boxes for a lot of people and fill a lot of voids. But let's see how it performs. That's the interesting thing. I wanna know first of all, what do you think about the looks of these things? Because I must admit when I took the plastic off these yesterday when they arrived from TaylorMade, it was pretty significant in my response that I think these look absolutely stunning. For me, the low and the mid, the high gloss finish is a real good eye catcher for me. The matte finish on the hybrid has sort of been seen before, really nice looking. I love that black finish, but the black finish coupled with the high gloss, it really catches my eye. And I wanna know first of all in the comments box below, what do you think of them in terms of looks? Which one would you go for if you had the choice? Based on looks alone, and what do you think of the black shaft? We've seen this quite a few times in recent months. I've seen it in putters, now this KBS shaft that they're putting into these gapper clubs and then once again looks absolutely stunning. We're only talking about looks, don't forget. Looks mean nothing, it is all about performance. But in terms of catching your eye on the shelf, I think you're gonna pick these up and take a closer look at them. And that's what we're gonna do now. Let's get hitting some balls two yards to my right. Let's get some dry ball data and see how these performs. And don't forget the hands of the average golfer. Okay, so that's golf balls hit and we've got some dry ball data to start to work with and it's in front of me now on the iPad and we'll have a very, very quick run through of this. And we'll start off with the Gapper 4. Don't forget this is the strongest lofty club. It's 22 degrees aloft. You can get this in a 3, 4, 5 and 6 in this head shape. All different lofts to start with and then you've got the added adjustability. But this is 22 degrees aloft, never changed any loft setting whatsoever. So here's the numbers up on screen now. So, ball speed 126, launching 14.4, uh, spin 3944, bang on where you'd expect it to be, 28 peak height, 189 carry. And I think that's pretty much done everything I would expect it to do in terms of numbers. No great surprises there. I swung the club reasonably well, hit it reasonably well, and like I said, I think performance was as I would probably expect from that kind of club. But the thing to say first of all is a gap of three, this is lofted at 18 degrees, once again, no adjustments in the loft whatsoever, and go straight into the numbers here. So ball speed slightly dropped off, and again, I would say that's to do with off center hits and poor consistency of finding the middle of the club, 125 ball speed, spinning at three two, Peak height 29, which was interesting, 194 carry. So again, additional yardage with the stronger loft, all kinds of things, spin number was very, very good. 
Struck the ball not as good as what I struck with the Gappa 4, to be quite honest with you, on dry ball days, and that was interesting, but it still performed admirably well. And again, I think pretty much where you'd expect it to be in terms of the dry ball data numbers. So then it's off over to the Gappa Low, and this is a two iron, it's 17 degrees aloft, and once again, no adjustments at this stage. Um, here's the numbers up on screen for the Gappa 2. So, ball speed on this one, moved up and down a little bit but 128 overall and as high as 134 with one of the balls I struck there um, and again that's down to consistency of strike from the average golfer uh, as we'd expect launch angle dropped down to 13.7 so a much more a lower penetrating ball flight spin drops right down to two and a half thousand revs so finding a firm fairway that kind of ball flight that kind of spin it really is going to run for a long long way average carry at 204 Right, so dry ball data is done. We've obtained some numbers, but it's time for the next part of this test. The next phase of this was out there on the golf course, and uh, I took these and tried them in a number of different situations. All three of the clubs. For me, these kind of clubs I would mainly use from the tee, from the fairway, and from the short rough. Maybe, maybe the uh, high, you'd get an option of playing it out of the longer rough. But for me, uh, certainly the mid and the low with these type of lofts, I wouldn't be looking to play these out of anything other than the sort of first cut of rough with a nice fluffy lie, to be honest with you. Off the tee and off the fairway, once again, found very, very similar things. When I got the two out the middle, it went like an absolute bullet. The ball flight is a very low penetrating ball flight. Taylor made a talking about this of being able to produce different shape of shots and that again is not aimed at my level of golfer. I want a ball that goes straight and down the fairway. I'm not tinkering around with it in low draws and uh, it's just not my game at all. And I don't know about you, so maybe that might be suited more to your game. But for average golfers, I think it probably sits in the better player category. The mid club, however, ticks a number of boxes for me. A bit chunkier, a bit more confidence inspiring behind the ball. And when I hit this ball, Quite often, to be fair, I didn't hit many bad ones out there on the course. Absolutely buttoned it. Great ball flight, not too high and by the same token, not too low. Penetrating ball flight, loved it off the tee and certainly might fill a decent void for me. With the what I call a hybrid, it's the high club, but it's very much a classic hybrid looks. Again, great performance. The speed foam injected into each of these club heads, a little bit more in each of them, obviously depending on the size and their head profile. And again, speed foam for me, it's hard to measure. It's, it's difficult to say, but it certainly performs very, very well indeed. I th certainly think that it has an, um, it impacts on performance because I think there's more forgiveness definitely in the hybrid down at the four end route, but that could be just down to the fact that it's greater lofted as well. So it's hard to say, but what I will say is that the feel and sound all for me tick boxes. They're really, really good performance. I like all of these. Like I said, in the right hands, I think these could fill end up in a lot of people's bags, fill a lot of voids, and I love the fact that they've made them fully adjustable because that's where the key is for me. Fully adjustable, lots of changes in lofts, lots of options in where you start off with the product that you start with in each of these, and then loads of changes in lofts. So you can get yourself to a driving range if you have got that gap between four iron and hybrid or, or your three wood or your five wood. If you are looking to fill a gap, then this adjustability really allows you to dial into a number, perhaps fill that gap. I'm going to carry on testing with this three because I really like the idea of this and I've got a feeling it could well end up in my bag and uh, if TaylorMade aren't looking it'll probably be there for a few weeks to come but keep an eye out for that. In the meantime this is my first look, my opinion and mine only but what we are going to do is I'm going to, as I've already mentioned in previous videos, our team of taggers, our testers are coming in and we're going to try this uh, gap range from a number of different handicaps and age categories and I'll let them give you a more varied opinion and see what the feedback is that's going to be in the coming weeks keep an eye out for that if you don't subscribe to the channel already then please do so comment down below one of your feedback what do you think of the gap range of products in terms of looks what do you think of performance will they fill a void would it be a bag uh, a game that you would consider uh, putting into the bag and hit that like button is the last one i think i've got to mention other than that i'm going to carry on a few more balls enjoy the rest of your day and i'll see you soon